Hello everyone. I bet you can't guess what today's video is going to be based on. That's right, honing guard. <laughs> nope, not making that mistake again. This video will be based on chisels, different types, their different uses, and hopefully give you a clearer understanding by the end of the video. So let's go. Now this is the problem with being in the front workshop. There's always trucks and stuff outside. But anyway, if you didn't get that reference at the start with introducing the wrong tools, be sure to watch my tool duel video where I introduced marking gauges as honing guides. No idea how I did it, but anyway, getting into this video. Disclaimer before I start, I don't have any Japanese chisels here because I haven't used them before and I wouldn't do them justice if I tried to explain them to you. So I'm gonna leave them out. You'll have to do your own research on that. And also, all of this stuff I'm going to gear towards furniture making, again not focusing on carpentry here, but if you are a carpenter you might get some tips anyway, so carry on watching. So with that in mind, get in close and let's see what we got here. So because we obviously have so many chisels here, I'm going to do a quick rundown of all of their names and then I'll talk about them all in more detail. So firstly, this is a paring chisel, then we've got some firmer chisels here. We've got a mortise chisel, we've got a corner chisel, we've got a fishtail chisel, we've got two skew chisels here, we've got a micro chisel, we've got bevel edge chisels all the way through to here, and we've got bevel edge chisels that are based more towards carpentry over here. So let's talk about the pairing chisel to start with. So you're probably looking at this and thinking, Christ, that's a bit excessive, isn't it? Yep, yeah, pretty much but for good reason. The reason this is so long is because one, it's for pairing. So say if you had a groove that you wanted to clear out in the bottom, you would be able to go all the way through to that and you'd be able to have a much farther reach than you would with a standard chisel. Also having something this length means that you could use it to pare down tenons, for example, if you're fitting it into a mortise. If you don't have something like a shoulder plane, you're relying on a chisel. Using this gives you a bigger point of reference and you can also fine tune the angle that you hold the handle. With a smaller chisel like this, it's a bit harder to get those precise adjustments, but something over this length, you can get really, really micro adjustments. So a pairing chisel is very useful to have. I don't actually have one in my kit, but looking at this one, I really want one now. It's just, it's like a sword. So next ones, firmer chisels. Now, if you raid your granddad's garage, a firmer chisel is probably what you're most likely to find in there. Now, before the days of power tools, these would have been used to maybe chop out hinges, chop out locks and things like that. They have a very robust build on them. The handles are made of beech, so you can whack it with a hammer. So they're good all-rounder tools when it comes to carpentry, but furniture making, you'll find uses for them occasionally, but they won't be quite as versatile, and I'll show you that later on. These are some modern-day firmer chisels made by Kirschen, and you'll see here that these actually have bevels on the top of them. So that sometimes throws a bit of people off when they think that, oh, they need to get a bevel edge chisel for furniture making. This one has bevel edges, it's shiny, I'll buy that. But this is actually still a firmer chisel and you know that by how thick these sides are. Generally having flat spots that thick on the side of a chisel can be limiting for furniture making. So that's firmer chisels. They used to be sort of the norm, but now they're kind of a little bit outdated, but people still find uses for them. I still find uses for them. Great for opening paint pots, this one. I didn't say that. Next one, mortise chisel. So a mortise chisel, as you can see, is a bit of a chunky monkey. It's kind of got a similar shape to a firmer chisel in that it's obviously flat on top and the sides are square to it. But look at the thickness difference. So as the name would imply, a mortise chisel is used for chopping out mortises. So it's a really robust build on it. You can absolutely whack this thing. You're not going to experience any power loss when you're hitting it with a hammer because obviously this is just so thick. And also the fact that these sides are square to the cutting faces and they're also a large bearing surface means that once you start getting further down into that mortise, it's gonna help it locate side to side, which is obviously great because no one wants a bendy mortise. So that's pretty much what a mortise chisel is, chopping out mortises. So next ones, let's look at corner chisels, fishtail chisels, and skew chisels. So a corner chisel, as the name would imply, they are for chopping out a 90 degree corner. So this is really handy, especially in the modern day as well, because when you're routing out hinges, for example, and you want to chop that corner out and just get the final 90 degrees in there where the router bit hasn't been able to get right into the corner, pop one of these in there, whack it once, and then you've got a perfect 90 degree corner and you've finished off the round over left by the router. So they're handy in applications like that. It's quick and easy. You can't really get it wrong. Also, if you're doing a shallow mortise, not anything too heavy where you need them to rely on these, but shallow mortises, I sometimes drill them out 
having something like this would be handy if I actually owned one to clear out those corners left by the round drill bit. So corner chisels. Next one is the fishtail chisel. So a fishtail chisel comes into its own when you're doing lap dovetails because the shape of it allows you to get right into the back corner of all the sockets and you can clean out all the waste in there that might prevent the tails from bottoming out in them. So they're pretty handy in that respect and obviously you can use them for other skewed applications. The only thing you've got to watch out with these is that you can't really overuse them because obviously that fish tail isn't a massive length from there so you can't, you can't re-grind this to start with. You're going to be wanting to work with secondary bevels on this mainly and really prolong the life of that tool just use it for that final nipping out of the corner. So that's pretty good. You could call it a limited use, but they're handy to have. These ones here are skew chisels. And in a similar application, these are very good at, again, cleaning out the corners of dovetail sockets on lap dovetails. So you can get right into the corner on the right-hand side with this one, and then into the corner on the left-hand side with this one. And obviously, these are a standard chisel shape, so you can grind these all the way down. You're not limited by the steel that you have on the end of this fishtail chisel. So that's skew chisels, and they obviously have other uses as well. They can be a bit of a nightmare to sharpen, but if you watched my video on comparing the Lee Nielsen honing guide with the Veritas honing guide, you'll know that there are options out there to sharpen something like this accurately without doing it freehand. Oh, I said it. Oh, dear. Right, next ones. Bevel edge chisels. So without ruining the end too much, bevel edge chisels are probably the most versatile ones out there. Obviously, if you get a specified mortise chisel, that's gonna be better for mortising, but you can still do light mortising with a bevel edge chisel. Similarly, you could also do pairing with these. You don't necessarily need to get a pairing chisel, but the pairing chisel has characteristics that are better for that task over something like this. So the ones we've got here, this one here is a micro chisel, and this is by Ashley Isles. I got this when I was making a small model at Riker Wood. It's just a really, really tiny blade on that, and it actually has bevel edges on it still. So characteristics of these, they have bevel edges on them, which doesn't seem like a massive deal for people who are just starting off, but when you come to dovetailing, the fact that you have those tapered edges on there means that you can get right down to the baseline when you're cleaning out the tails, for example, whereas the square corners on a firmer chisel would bruise the edges of the tails and then show up in the finished joint. So that's kind of the main advantage with a bevel edge chisel. One thing you need to look out for these is that a good quality bevel edge chisel, the bevels come down to a fine point on the end, if not a complete point like they do on these Veritas ones, whereas ones of a lesser quality will come to a much thicker point. They'll still call them bevel edge chisels, but you'll just start bruising the corners when you're cutting dovetails, for example. So when it comes to buying these, check to see how small that flat spot is on the side here. Ideally, you want it to be as small as possible. I will be covering this in my next tool duel video. So next ones, butt chisels. Yeah, it's a great name, isn't it? Butt chisel. <laughs> so these are pretty much exactly the same as a bevel edge chisel, but as you can see, they're smaller. So. Not really many advantages these have over standard chisels, other than being able to fit into smaller spaces. So perhaps if you've assembled a carcass and you haven't cut out the hinges yet, you need to be able to get your chisel inside that carcass and still have enough space to hit it on top with the hammer. Something like this would allow you to do that in most cases, whereas something like this may not fit inside that carcass. And if it does, you're not gonna have a lot of room on top here to hit it with the hammer. So that's pretty much all a butt chisel does. It doesn't chisel out butts. It's just for confined spaces. Next ones, let's look at these carpentry chisels here. So you can usually define carpentry chisels by two things. Firstly, the handles on them are made from this like plasticky rubber sort of thing. And secondly, on the ends of them, they have got metal caps on them. So as you'll be able to see on these Stanley chisels, the metal on the end goes all the way through the handle and right the way through to the blade, which makes these great for absolutely whacking with a hammer because you lose absolutely no energy whatsoever by hitting that. It's transferred straight through to the blade. Whereas if you were whacking something like a wooden handle chisel with a hammer, firstly, you might end up splitting the handle, especially if you're using a metal hammer. Generally, these are okay with wooden mallets, especially if they've got split-proof handles on them. But if you're whacking these with a metal hammer, you're gonna start damaging the end of it, it's gonna start mushrooming over, and you're gonna lose a lot of power in it. Having a carpentry chisel, you've got a metal end on it, goes straight through, and you can absolutely whack these things. So we've got two types here. These ones are from Stanley. These ones are Axminster branded ones. And as you can see, these both have bevel edges on them and they are both sold as bevel edge chisels. Now, I'm gonna say this now, it's not gonna be in a tool duel video because I might as well get out of the way. If you're getting into furniture making, you're obviously told to buy bevel edge chisels. Do not be fooled by the Stanley ones here because look at the size of the flat spots on the side of them. Like I said earlier, if you're gonna try and dovetail with these, you are gonna bruise the hell out of your dovetails with that. So 
These will be good for carpentry, don't get me wrong on that, but don't be fooled by the name on them. They have bevel edges on them, but they're just not quite there. These ones on Axminster come down to a relatively fine point. It may still be a little bit limited when it comes to furniture making, but you could probably work around that. So when it comes to buying your first one, let's start narrowing them down. Now, this is obviously going to be a quick process because I kind of gave away what the final result's going to be. So start with pettering chisel. Don't really need it to start with. At least you might find uses for it later. So firmer chisels, they've kind of been outdated by bevel edge chisels. So I don't know, if you're doing stuff around the house, you might still find a use for firmer chisels. But me, not necessarily as a furniture maker. So... Obviously the Stanley ones here didn't really rate them as bevel edge chisels, so we're gonna get rid of them. Oh, I can't click my hands. Um, Magic apparently. So let's move these ones in. So starting off, you don't really need a corner chisel either. So, and now when it comes to clearing out the back of dovetail sockets, for example, you've kind of got the choice here between fishtail and skew chisels. For me, I would probably go for the skew chisels because firstly, they've got a wider sweep on them so you could get into steeper skews. And also they're gonna last a bit longer as well. So fishtail chisel is nice to have. So in most cases, I would probably say that a skew chisel is more versatile, but do your own research on that one. Now we're sort of getting into difficult ground because it depends on the sort of work you're doing. If you think you're gonna be doing lots of hand mortising, for example, you're obviously going to need a mortise chisel. For me, I haven't actually needed one because I've had access to mortises and stuff in the past. And in all honesty, I was drilling out mortises and then cleaning them up with my bevel edge chisels. So it is much better to have a designated mortise chisel. I cannot argue against that, but I wouldn't say you get them to start with. I would say buy them when you actually need them or when you're gonna be doing a lot of mortising. So let's get rid of them. Now, like I said earlier, skew chisels, they're good to have if you're doing lots of lap dovetails. They're pretty versatile. But in terms of starting off, you probably don't need them again unless you're going to be doing lots of dovetailing, which if you're furniture making, you probably will be. That's why I've left them in this late. But to start with, you don't really need them. So I'm going to get rid of them. And whoopee do, look at that. We're left with all the bevel edge chisels. So let's get these all centered. So yeah, as you would expect, I've been left with bevel edge chisels because they're usually the most versatile for furniture making. So we've got a couple here that I can still get rid of. Micro chisel, that's if you're gonna be doing lots of fine model making and really, really fine joinery. I had to buy it specifically for one use and that is what I would recommend you doing. You don't really need them to start off, so and butt chisels again you might need them but i would probably say that something of this sort of size is more of a standard size is a bit more versatile so uh get rid of these as well and there we go after all that i've been left with standard bevel edge chisels the most versatile of them all but question is next which brand do you get so that i'm afraid will be covered in a future video being a tool jewel and that will be out next and that will be covering all of the bevel edge chisels that i have here things to look out for and what i would recommend you buy now some of you might ask what sizes you should get to start with and again this is very dependent on what sort of work you're doing what i would advise you doing is looking at what sort of kits that manufacturers have available so lee nielsen for example supply chisels in sets of five and usually that's a good set that will cover most tasks for you with me my set of standard chisels ranges from six millimeters so a quarter inch all the way up to a three quarter inch or 19 slash 20 millimeters say and that's pretty much covered most uses for me so any questions i'll see chuck them below and hopefully that's cleared things up for you See you in the next video.